History of Israel Torah class. The book of Habakkuk is what you are to study tonight. Now I raised some questions. Having looked at the three chapters of the book of Habakkuk, um, one cannot read the book of Habakkuk without asking questions even. Do you see wickedness, violence, and corruption around you as we live in our world today? Bringing to what is in the book of Habakkuk into the context of our world today. The question is, do you see wickedness, violence, and corruption around you? What is your attitude towards the evil around you? What is your attitude towards the evil around you? Do you consider the ongoing, sorry, do you consider the oncoming judgment of Yahweh based on the corruptions, wickedness, violence that engulfing the earth? Now, these questions can be answered by anyone in his own way. Habakkuk asks similar questions. And he knew that there will be judgment because he saw wickedness, he saw violence, he saw corruption going on in the midst of his people. Now, he didn't know what type of judgment that will come, but he felt that Yahweh was keeping quiet. You see, most times the righteous live in the land. They see things going the way that is contrary to the scriptures, that is contrary to the way of Yahweh. And their heart probes them to ask certain questions. If Yahweh is with us, why are we seeing all this? Why is all this going on? Why is Yahweh not accosting the situation, accosting these people? Why is he not judging them instantly, for instance? Now, we want to look at what transpired. Who is Habakkuk? Habakkuk, or the meaning of Habakkuk, is embracer. And we are told, in simple English language, to embrace is to cuddle is to hug, is to, you know, take somebody, move closer to somebody, is bosom, is close, is a spouse. And more so, it is act of confidence. Confidence. Having confidence, having trust, becoming, you know, close to the point that you submit all of your being to the power, to the authority. That is having faith now in, your, in Yahweh. So Habakkuk, by his meaning, is one who is very, very close, very, very faithful, very, very uh, would you say friendly? No, that would be a loose way of putting it. Yahweh was his life. So, that is what this man is captured or how he was seen. He was very close to Yahweh that everything that happens around him, he finds answer from Yahweh. He was the eight, eight of, that is number eight of the 12, 12 minor prophets known as Triasa. Triasa means the 12. He was part of the number of, you know, prophets, the 12 members of prophets, they called minor prophets. He was a profound of, sorry, he was a man of profound faith and devotion. Embracer captures his love for Yahweh. He was 
a contemporary of Jeremiah in his days. He was acknowledged you know, to be a great worshiper, a righteous man. He was knowledgeable about the three men enemies of Israel. He was schooled, he was tutored. He had knowledge about three enemies of Israel in his time. Today, do you know who are your enemies? Enemies are real, enemies exist, both spiritual and physical. Do you know your spiritual enemy? Do you know the physical ones? Habakkuk knew them, those who were this, at least the physical enemies of Israel. Number one, the Edomites. Edomites was captured by Obadiah, Obadiah's prophecy. He was the one that declared that by the time Yahshua will be returning to the earth, the Edomites will be wiped out. They are children of Esau, those that live in Mount Seir. They hated Jacob. They hated Israel. They wanted to obliterate Israel. To the point that when Judah was, you know, taken away to Babylon, they were happy. They were clapping their hands. They were saying, yes, the land now belongs to them. So Obadiah captured the story about them and how they're going to be wiped out. Assyrians also was their enemy. They were ruled by the Assyrians. Now, the book of Nahum's or the prophecy of Nahum captured that. Assyrians ruled them at this particular time of Habakkuk. Um, they were subject of that nation. Remember Assyrians, which the capital was Nineveh, um, was the nation that Yahweh told Jonah, go and preach to them. Mm -hmm. Tell them about their sins. Let them know that they have sinned and their sins have come before him. And in few days time, he will wipe them out. So the story is what you know. At the end, the, um, uh, Jonah visited the land, passed on the message, and uh, the king called his subjects, the people of Nineveh, to repentance. They repented. But about three days, they fasted, they prayed, and they will hear their prayers. The third enemies of Judah then, in the time of Habakkuk, was Babylonians. After the fall of Assyrians, because as Assyrians, their powers were dwindling, was going down. The powers of Babylon was rising. And um, these Chaldeans, the Babylonians are called the Chaldeans, is exactly what Habakkuk wrote about. He captured the stories behind the Babylonians. Yahweh opened his eyes to see how the Babylonians are going to invade the people of Judah, take them into exile, punish them, kill many of them, and the rest of them will be slaves in the land of Babylon. Now, the book of Habakkuk is relevant today as it was relevant during the time he was, you know, opening the eyes of his people. He was, he was not all that you know, known. He wasn't all that um, a man of power, a man of strength. So he came out from a prominent family, going back to the time of the great uh, 
great uh, grandfather who was uh, Hezekiah. But he came out quietly and uh, was always in search of the heart of Yahweh to know what Yahweh is offering to him, to his people, Judah. And um, apparently, iniquity was everywhere. And he began to ask questions to Yahweh, not to man. Because man does not have answer to way of you know, righteousness, except the man that has learned from Yahweh and is ready to pass on what he learned from Yahweh to the people. So let's see this focus of Habakkuk. Habakkuk's prophecies was about Judah's sins, which led to the coming of the Babylonian exile. Chapters, chapter 1, 5 to 11 told us clearly about this. But the more intriguing aspect is the prophet's, um, the more intriguing aspect is the prophet's publicity as to why Yahweh should permit the continuance of sin. Why would Yahweh continue to allow sin in the land of Judah? Habakkuk wrote about Judah cum Babylon. Judah was his people. What did they do? Their sin or their problem was sin, sin of rebelling against Yahweh's commandments, laws. See, each of the prophets that wrote held their, you know, all that they wrote or their instruction from Torah, from the law. And no wonder Yahshua said that he did not come to cancel the law and the prophets, but he came to, you know, um, he came to fulfill it, he came to expand it, he came to make it, he came to magnify it, he came to make it honorable, he came to, you know, present it originally as it was written. Why? Because those laws were adopted, they were either removed or added, you know, things were added or removed. So he came to put it aright. That was exactly that what Matthew chapter um, 5 or 17 presented. But people read it upside down. People say that he came to fulfill, meaning that he came to finish everything. He came to say, oh, let me handle everything about obedience to Yahweh's word, Yahweh's commandment. Then you do nothing. That is the message of today in Christianity, which is absolutely wrong because they said as Yahshua came and fulfilled everything made you not to do anything again now you obtain grace from him that with grace you are able to you know live life of righteousness and that doesn't tell us what happened to the law because the bible the same bible said it must be by law and by the testimony of the law. Or else, there is no truth, there is no light in whatever anybody is teaching from the Torah or from the commandments or from the book of covenant. So the New Testament alone, if you are looking at New Testament alone, you will get the message of Yahweh you know, wrong. The, the whole testament, the whole, the whole book or the whole covenant, old, new, must be carried on board, must be taken together so that one will understand that without works, works of righteousness, obedience, works of righteousness is obedience. With obedience and faith, you are able to do the work or the desire or the will of Yahweh. And there and then, you'll be able to position yourself as obedient servant who is ready to enter his kingdom. So Habakkuk focused on why Yahweh would use a pagan people, Babylonians, to conquer Judah. Because in one of his queries, 
he, he put to Yahweh, he was wondering, when Yahweh told him, yes, I have everything on board, I have planned what I'm going to do to Judah. Part of it was to use Babylon to tame them, to, you know, teach them a lesson. Then Habakkuk was like wondering, yeah, well, why would you do that? How would you use a pagan nation to teach your children who live by your way, your word, your covenant way? How would you use a pagan nation? What would they teach them at the end of the day? I believe that um, Habakkuk didn't so much understand the response of Yahweh, that Judah was to go into punishment, severe punishment. They're going to go into slavery. He understood that they're going to leave their land. But at the end of the day, he felt it was too harsh. Why would, you see, at times, you want Yahweh to give you an answer to a situation. And when Yahweh comes with an answer, you begin to wonder, Yahweh, why did you do it this way? Why did it go that way? Why? Because we have, you know, our own standard. We, we want Yahweh to come to our level. Yahweh can never come to our level. So when we are making our prayers or requests or asking him questions, we should expect Yahweh's answer. And we should go by Yahweh's word. But at the end of the day, Habakkuk came to agree, accept, because, I mean, he has faith in Yahweh. He knew that Yahweh's word is air and them, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. You can't change it. Even if you can change it, it would not do you any good. So the book concludes with Habakkuk's prayer, recognizing Yahweh's splendor. Splendor, he recognizes Yahweh's magnificence, glory, majesty, grandeur, and righteousness, that is justice, and uh, petitioning his mercy. He equally petitioned the mercy of Yahweh in all that Yahweh is going to carry out. This summarized, you know, the, the book in a way. Now let's look at the significance a bit. Man cannot fully know or comprehend Yahweh's ways. The prophet was shocked that Yahweh had allowed sin to exist in Judah without doing anything about it. Habakkuk could not understand why Yahweh tolerated Judah's sins, not realizing that Yahweh had already predetermined their judgment. He approached Yahweh in prayer about it, but was told something was being done about it. He kept pressing for cogent answers. Eventually, Yahweh revealed to him that Babylonians would punish Judah for their sins, but that did not seem to go down well with Habakkuk, who received the message with shock. Why would an unrighteous nation like Babylon, who never served Yahweh, be the people to judge seemingly the people of Yahweh? Number two, in chapter 2 of the book of Habakkuk, verse 4 particularly, the prophet states, but the just, just there is Isadik, Isadik, that is Hebrew, uh, Hebrew word for just. The Sadik, that is the lawful, the righteous, the, the holy person shall live by his faith. Everybody, you see, the, the Yahweh's answer was very straight. While this man was wondering, his people have seen quite all right. But Yahweh is contemplating that the unholy Babylon are going to you know, carry them away. Uh, you know, these people are unrighteous. They, they worship Baal. They don't worship Yahweh. They don't have anything to do with Yahweh. They don't know him. How, how would they come and judge Yahweh's own people? Well, that is the tool, the tool in the hands of Yahweh to deal. It's like 
a rod in our hands to train our children to mold their character. Yahweh will always use Assyrians, Babylonians, Egyptians to tempt Israel, to teach Israel the right way to go. But in that, Yahweh said, amongst his people, whether Judah or Israel or Gentile nation that embrace his way, when they misbehave, he will lift the rod, Assyria, Babylon, Egypt, on them. Those that will be saved are the Isadik, the lawful, or the righteous ones, the faithful ones. And he said they must continue to live by their faith, the faith they have in him. So it's very crucial. For the Apostle Paul quoted uh, Habakkuk uh, very, very well. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. And most of the apostles as well, you know, mentioned when they were talking about faith, only, only that the New Testament carried it too far, as if faith is only what we need. Because the just, for, the ju for somebody to become just or justified, he must be seen to be doing the will of the Father. That is, he must be seen to be living in obedience and holding on to Yahweh. That is faith, depending on Yahweh, trusting Yahweh, having confidence in Yahweh. That is where faith comes in. That, that means you have to, it has to be a continuous you know, uh, goal of the individual to continue to hold to Yahweh. Now, justification by faith is a central concept in the New Testament, being quoted in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, Galatians 3, 11, Hebrews 10, 38. Faith alone, faith alone concept does not alleviate or remove the, the need for obedience. Faith and righteousness, sorry, faith and righteous obedience to Yah's word, that is work, are not mutually exclusive, but codependent. That means Faith and work, they go together. They are not exclusive. They are not apart. They combine, they work together. If you say you have faith, you must have work. Amen. If you say you have work, you must have faith. Or else, if you allow, if there is that separation in the two, and you said you hold on to work, and you don't look at faith, which will help you to, you know, lean on Yahweh, to depend on Yahweh, then the person will be in trouble. And that was what happened to Judah here. Even with work, they were not there. Even with work, they were not there. So both ends, they were missing. And that was why judgment came upon them straight away. And you cannot say you have work. You will not, you know, be part of faith. Judgment will come. And if you say you have faith and you are not partaking in obedience, work, judgment will come. So whichever way, unless the person combines both ends together, that's where your way will hold you and embrace you as the name of Habakkuk goes, the embracer. Faith and righteous obedience to Yah's word, that is work, are not mutually exclusive, but co-dependent. Genesis 15 verse 6, you remember in Genesis 15 verse 6, Abraham heard Yahweh, did the will of Yahweh, the, what Yahweh commanded him to do, and he trusted Yahweh, he had confidence in Yahweh, and it was counted to him as what? Righteous. As righteousness. The same thing we saw in Genesis chapter 17, 1 to 12, or even up to 1 to 20, something, 1 to 24, where Yahweh told him, come, I will show you my perfect way, my righteous way. 
now follow it. And he followed it. And the sign was circumcision. The token, as the Bible put it, is circumcision. And he said, I will make this circumcision. I will allow you to remove your foreskin to be a mark in you that you have agreed to obey me. So obedience is very, very important. Obedience is doing the good work of Yahweh. Amen. The good work of Yahweh is hearing his word, doing it, and continue to trust him, continue to follow him. That is faith. That is how we are bound with Yahweh. We, we are binded him with him, you know, or in him when we keep to his covenant, which we make with him as he made covenant with Abraham. Now, in Genesis 26, verse 5, we are told Abraham kept his law. That is exactly what he's looking from us. Romans chapter 4, verse 3, talked about faith. The just shall live by faith. Galatians 3, 6 to 9, also uh, specified about that as well as Apostle Paul. They said Apostle Paul was teaching based on faith and faith and faith. That I know Apostle Paul must have taught them about obedience. Number three, on the significance of the book of Habakkuk. Judah lacked faith and walked towards Yahweh. They lacked faith in Yahweh and, you know, obeying his word. As a result of that lack, their judgment was swift without delay. As judgment of unbelieving mankind in these latter days will surely come to pass, where all the sinners, that is the wicked, have been marked for destruction. Now, the historical antecedent is a bit huge, but let's, let's paraphrase it to say that Judah was under Assyrian Empire. You know, about 640 to 605 BCE, that is before Common Era. They were under them, they were controlling them. Their capital was in, in, in Nineveh. But when um, Assyria showed weakness, when their power, their might was, you know, kind of weakening in a way, the Babylonians, whose power was increasing or rising, stood up, and um, before you knew it, they conquered Assyria. That means conquering Assyria means Judah will be under the control of Babylon. And no wonder Babylon came to conquer them or took them away. They became the arrow, arrowhead, or the, the weapon through which Yahweh used to take them away and that was about um the king of babylon that did that was uh called, was called uh, nabopolaza nabopolaza um it was a uh, son of uh, nebuchadnezzar two between 605 to 562 bce now they launched attack on Judah, and that resulted to the fall of Judah in 586 BC, BCE. So Judah was taken away. Why? Because of violence in the land, wickedness in the land, corruption in the land. Has it got any similarity of what is going on today? Today is even worse than what was going on then because there's bloodshed everywhere. Cheating, covetousness, wickedness, so to speak, all those that we hear happened in the land of Judah at that time is happening in such a greater height or greater level today. Habakkuk's prophecies today the prophecies of Habakkuk is a significant message not only to the people of Judah then, but to this day where violence, corruption, wickedness, and evil permeates into every fabric of human society. 
whether it is politics, whether it is economy, whether it is religion, whether it is cultural values, when violence and corruption abound and evil appears to rule, the faithful may be tempted to wonder whether Yahweh really cares or is really in control. Habakkuk's dialogue or discourse helped us to understand that Yahweh does not despise such questions when they are brought to him in prayer. Because Yahweh was, I mean, Habakkuk was always going to Yahweh, meditating, praying, waiting for Yahweh's answer. Let me wait and see what Yahweh will respond to, to these questions that is bothering my head. That is because he was perplexed by what was going on in the society. We see that in Joel chapter 2, Psalm 83. In Joel chapter 2, Yahweh, if you reminded Israel, it's time for you to pray because there is trouble that is going to swallow you up. As we notice today, 2020, 2021, mm -hmm. we saw it with our eyes that trouble is coming in and they are, they were as, as they were pushing it, they were, you know, practicing it, telling you what they're going to do today, next today, and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yahweh say, pray, pray, pray. His people were folding their hands. His people were enjoying. His people were drinking beer. Like their leader who was there drinking beer in number 10 down the street. And um, he blessed Yahweh because there are this few, tiny group of people who believe in the name of Yahweh. Because the book of Enoch says, those that will be saved in the later days will be saved by calling his name. Book of Jewel said that as well. Book of Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 10 and 12 also said that, that will be saved based in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. We must begin to call upon his name. Uh -huh. Matthew chapter 23 said, we must call on his name in these later days. Before our security, our safety, you know, will be assured. Otherwise, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. You must learn to pray. In all these chapters 1, chapter 2 of Habakkuk, after the queries and all that he posed to he put to Yahweh, and Yahweh responded, what he did was to go into prayers. Because he you know it wasn't to rule any longer. Yahweh has spoken and he has spoken. He couldn't change the mind of Yahweh. Yahweh let Yahweh be done but save your people. Let the just be saved by their faith. Habakkuk's prophecy reaffirms that Yah is in control of history and that his dealings are always just and right. Believers must be willing to accept Yah's answers and delight in his will, even if those are completely foreign to their own thinking. Yah does, does see and care deeply about what happens on earth today. Although people may not perceive it, Yahweh's sovereign hand is at work and he will ultimately bring matters to a proper and just conclusion. Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3, and also verse 14. The Babylonians worshipped the raw power that brought them bounty. Yahweh's charges against the Babylonians at the end of the day, because Yahweh will still judge those who judge his people. He will <laughs> call them to, to account. Yah's charges against the Babylonians remind readers to worship Yah alone. First John chapter 5, verse 21. It's just like the globalists, the kings of the earth, can see that Yahweh <laughs> is picking them and, you know, confounding them, humiliating them. We wouldn't say judgment at the moment. He's, he said in Psalm chapter 2 that he's going to laugh at them. Now he's just laughing at them. Laughing at them. Time will come when the laughter will be resounding all over the world. And uh, the judgment will be executed with punishment. So we, we, we are in safe hand when we draw close to Yahweh and pray. 
Although people may not perceive it, your sovereign hand is at work and he will ultimately bring matters to a proper and just conclusion. Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3 and verse 14. All right, uh, it's like you're taking that. Habakkuk's discourse or dialogue and subsequent Yahweh's response and the punishment that followed is a call to awake any living human being to steer clear from sin because the days of those who continue in their sinful ways is coming quickly. The days when Yahweh will remember all their wickedness, when Yahweh will ask them to account everything they have done and they will face Yahweh without any answer. And that means they'll be cut off. And it will come with destruction those days. The wrath of Yahweh, the anger of Yahweh will come with destruction. And the everlasting death will face those people who literally rebel against Yahweh. Yah's message to Habakkuk emphasizes that the believers, believers' holy life of faith, that is belief, trust, confidence, and faithfulness, that is honesty, uh, truthfulness, must reproduce Yah's high ethics. Those who trust and actively serve Yahweh will be able to rejoice in Him and live triumphantly under any circumstances. The book of Habakkuk is unusually among the prophetic books in that it consists mainly of a dialogue or discourse between him and Yahweh. Yahweh's response that he will send the Babylonians to conquer Judah came to pass in 586 BC, not many years after Habakkuk's book was written. This Prediction came to pass. Habakkuk represented the righteous Judahites who were perplexed by Yahweh's ways. Similarly, most believers today are bewildered as they notice the truth being trampled down by the unrighteous people of our time. However, Yahweh's judgment is sure and it will surely come to pass, mm. even when it appears to be delayed. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see that prayer at times can cause what you can call delay. Prayers can bring what you, you, you see. You know, at times people say Yahweh is not there. Because they get away with all that they are doing. All their wickedness, all their evil, they tend to get away. And they think Yahweh will not judge them. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what we can cover today. Let's see how we can get on board in chapter one. It's three chapters, chapter one, two, and three. Having stated the historical antecedents of the people of Judah in the days of Habakkuk, we want to see the discourse itself as written in the Bible. That is the, the, um, what you can call the questions and answers Habakkuk was asking Yahweh. At times, Yahweh would seem to delay in responding to him. Not that he was delayed. Yahweh had already mapped out what he's going to do. Now, when he speaks to Habakkuk, Habakkuk may, may seem to feel that it's not going his way, what he wanted to hear. And he will pray again. He will ask Yahweh another question. Maybe that borders on his people. Because initially he saw his people as sinners. I said, Yahweh, you're not doing anything about these people. They, they, they are sinners. You're keeping quiet. And, and Yahweh responded, I'm doing something. Something you do not know. I'm doing something. Don't worry. He said, Yahweh, <laughs> these people are out of hand, though. Are you still keeping quiet? <laughs> you always said you don't know. I am preparing the people from the north. They are going to come. And he discovered, Habakkuk discovered, that these people from the north are Babylonians. Babylonians, they were coming. And he now began to query away again. Oh, why Babylonians? 
These people are unrighteous people. How can the righteous judge the righteous? But who is righteous here now? <laughs> Look at Habakkuk asking Yahweh, you are not doing anything about Judah that was becoming unrighteous or that had gone, you know, hellwire in sin. And Yahweh said, I'm going to teach them a lesson. Don't worry. Yahweh responded. He said, no, you didn't get it. I mean, these people are sinning. What rod do you have for them? You always say Babylon is there. Say, no, 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 it's not Babylon. Babylon are righteous people. <laughs> well, I, in short, the book of Habakkuk is sweet to read because it's a conversation between father and son, kind of. And um, at the end of the day, the detail, it, it detailed what yeah, we want to do. Chapter 2 told us exactly what yeah, we want to do. But he began by telling us, don't worry, this is vision. This vision will come to pass. But even if it is delayed, don't worry, it will surely come to pass. Watch out. And when you hear this message, run with it. What message? Repent, repent, repent of your sin. Amen. Repent of your wicked ways. Or else it will come like a flood. It will be swept away. So chapter 1, let us go to chapter 1. Because chapter 3, there was uh, the, the prayer. Because after Habakkuk was done, when he got the message, he went into prayers. He knew it wasn't a joke any longer. Now, chapter 1. The burden, that is the message, which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. The message of Yahweh to Judah. Oh, Yahweh, he began. He, he was the one that really, really confronted Yahweh. You know, came to Yahweh politely. Like, son, we go to the father. <laughs> father, I'm seeing something new. <laughs> Are you seeing it the way I'm seeing it? Your people have gone haywire. They have moved out of the covenant. They have fallen away from the covenant. Oh, Yahweh. How long shall I cry? You know, he must have been praying. He must have been asking. And it's like to him, Yahweh was keeping quiet. And thou will not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou will not save. I have asked you. I have presented to you. I have came and prayed. Even myself, I'm trying to see how I will save myself. The violence is too much in the land. Everybody is running here, task the, the few innocent people, are, they want to swallow them up. I have asked you what you are going to do about this to save the situation, to save the people that will be swept away by these wicked people. Verse 3. Why does thou show me iniquity and cause me to Behold grievance. All I'm seeing around me is sin, sin. Today, do you see sin? You see, that was the question that was raised, you know, initially here. So, do you see wickedness? Yes. Do you see violence? Yes. Do you see corruption around you? Yes. What is your attitude towards the evil around you, the corruption, the sin, the wickedness you see? What is your attitude towards that? Do you consider the oncoming judgment? This is the position of Habakkuk in all this query. He said, For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are, there are that raise up strife and contention among the people of Judah. There are some that their habit have become strife, violence, murder, bloodshed, and contention, striving amongst themselves. Therefore, the law is slacked. When, when people leave the covenant way, what will happen to the law? What will happen to the law? Covenant. The problem, the, 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 the problem that um, Habakkuk was reporting was, was sin, 
Sin has made the law. Law. To, to disappear, so to speak. If you break one of the law, it, it, the whole law is, is gone. Mm. He, he used the word slack in King James. The law is being written off, it's being cancelled. When sin parades itself, what it does is, try, is, is to obliterate the law. Obliteration. Obliterate the law. That is what uh, sin cried out to do. Sin is asking law, get away. Law, be removed from the land. That is what the nations of the world is doing today. The whole effort, look at the children in the house. What are they trying to do? What are they preaching? They are saying to children who are one year or two years, three years, in their hands, education is the tool of today's world to change Yahweh's way. Education. Their education tries to change the moral way of life, morality. Morality must go. That is the way of Yahweh. The law must go. They want to reconstitute it. They want to reconfigure it. They want to blend it to their own way. Everybody must be focused to the government. That is what the education is teaching. Mm. Brainwash every child. Let every child believe in the authority of government. And the fathers are told the authority of the leaders, the authority of government must be respected. Nobody should disobey it. Obey the law. Obey the law. Obey the law of the land. Obey the law of the land. Or the authority. Those who are in authority, you should obey them. But who say you can't obey those in authority? But if their law is violating Yahweh's law, what do you do? Because all that they are trying to do is to to violate Yahweh's law, to cancel Yahweh's law, to destroy Yahweh's law. And they want you to obey them. They want you to follow them. They want you to live in accordance to their own law. And look at their law. None of their law recognizes the law of Yahweh. So what do you do? We are not saying that we should disrespect the law of the land. No. But when the law of the land contradicts the the covenant commandment of Yahweh, which one will prevail? The Bible said the word of Yahweh will prevail because Yahweh is creator of heaven and earth. Every authority is under his own control. He is the one that controls. He is the one that puts in power. Anybody that is going to rule, anybody that is going to reign, any king, any leader, any power, it is you know, res residing in the hands of Yahweh. Yahweh is the super authority. Yahweh is the commander in chief, the one that created the heaven and earth. And therefore, he has a constitution. He has a law. He has a covenant. It's called the book of covenant. Every of his ways are in the covenant. And if the rules or the laws of the land conflict with the rules or the, go or the, the, the laws of Yahweh, Laws of Yahweh must surely prevail. So, what they cannot easily get from the adults who are whose minds are still within most of them, not all of them, are still within the laws of Yahweh. Now they go by the children. They lower their 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 method, uh, making sure that the they, they go to the tender ones to brainwash them, making sure that they don't put eyes in the law of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So that whatever they tells them, they, they, the, the young ones will believe and follow it. So if the parents are teaching them the law of Yahweh, the way of Yahweh, now 
they will make sure that even when they come to their own educational way, that that teaching must be, in a way, removed. The teaching of Yahweh, they want to take away. So the quarrel, the problem is in verse 1. I mean, in chapter, oh, chapter 1, verse 4. You don't want the Lord to stay. That was the trouble of Judah. Did Judah recognize it? The Judah recognized it. I believe that Habakkuk was preaching to his own people at his own time, like other prophets. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, we are warning them. And he never let go. Therefore, the law is slacked, and judgment does never go forth. For the wicked does compa compass about the righteous. Therefore, therefore, wrong judgment proceeds proceeded when the wicked takes over the realms of our face the problem here was the kings the kings that they were getting at that time were wicked followed by followed idols when wicked kings wicked kings are kings that do not recognize Yahweh they do not worship him, they worship something else. They worship Baal, they worship idols, they worship gods of, you know, Gentiles. When that is happening, the entire population, the, the people, majority by far, toes that line. And what happens is corruption in the land. Wickedness that the Bible talk about, evil that the Bible talk about, the, the, the covetousness, murder, bloodshed, you know, they, 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 they do things to their own, just to their own. For instance, we are talking about tax today, hiking tax, tax, whether, you know, the, 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 the job tax, the NI tax, the VATs, talking about energy increases, electricity, gas, and so on. By this April, a lot will increase, you know, within all these corporations. They have raised up to increase their products, their goods, their services. So that is what happened in a society because they've lost the touch of love, love for Yahweh and love for the neighbor, or brothers and sisters, or the people. That love is gone. When love is removed, now what happens is that the law is mutilated or destroyed. The law disappears. People will be doing whatever they like. As a result, there will be hues and cries, there will be, you know, chaos. And that's why you see in many places, um, protests arising because of one rule, one rule or the other, one legislation or the other, one thing they brought in or many things they bring into the society that is affecting the people's life. So that is how sin operates. Sin will come to destroy the law so that there will be, you know, there will be disobedience in the land. There will be rebellion in the land. There will be crisis in the land. Sin brings all those things. And it is by virtue of putting down the law. See why the law is very, very important. Verse 5. Behold, ye among the heathens, ye among the hidden and the regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will walk a walk in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. I don't know how much of this Habakkuk understood Yahweh's response. Verse 5, beginning to verse 5 there, up to verse 11, Yahweh responded to Habakkuk. Habakkuk had, you know, asked Yahweh, are you not concerned? I have prayed, I have cried, I have called on you. There are violence in the land as a result of breaking the law. The people have broken the law. What do you say? 
and Yahweh, the first language or word or response of Yahweh is that he is preparing wonders to happen in the land marvelously. So I will walk a walk in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. In the days of Habakkuk, Yahweh was telling Habakkuk, don't worry, you think I'm, I don't know what is going on. I don't know what, it's not going to be far. In your own lifetime, it will happen. I'm going to deal with these people, you will see it. You, will, you are going to see it. I, I, I think at this time, Habakkuk must be wondering, what is Yahweh going to do? Mm -hmm. Now in verse, five, in verse 6, Yahweh told him what he's going to do. For, I, for lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans are Babylonians. I will raise Babylonians. That bitter and hasty nation. You see how he explained Babylonian? Babylonians are bitter. Very, very terrible. So they are hasty nation. Very swift in action. They don't look back when they begin to act. Which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are going to dispossess Judah and they are going to take over their lands. <laughs> Yahweh has put up a decree here. Verse 7. They are terrible, the Babylonians. And dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. They don't mince word when they want to do anything. They do it with their might. They do it with their dignity. In their own way of judgment, they proceed to do it. That's why they are terrible. Verse 8. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagles that hasted to eat. Revelation 19, 17 to 18. Babylonians are coming in this later days again. That is Revelation 19, 17 to 18. Warning us. You may say this thing is for them in their own days, in the ancient time. No. It's a topological prophecy. Yahweh was talking to them then and is talking to us today. That is, in as much as you continue to break the law, those that say the law is no longer there, Yahweh is coming to ask them, where is my law? People think Yahweh is keeping quiet. As Habakkuk thought, Yahweh was keeping quiet when he was, you know, asking him to do something. Yahweh is going to act. <laughs> and who is going to, who is he going to use as a tool? The Babylonians. Who are the Babylonians? The Americans, the British, the Germans, the Fra 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 France, or French, the French people, the, the Chinese, the Russians, the children of all these Caucasians, but to use them to hammer Israel, to deal with Israel. They shall come all for violence, are they coming for peace? Are they coming to dance or party gate? No. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sop up as the, as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity to the end, sorry, to the sand. Shall gather the captivity to their own doom, to their own destruction. And they shall scoff and the kings and the princes shall be as corn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this, imputing this his power unto his Eloah. Hmm. He said, the Babylonians are going to come. They are going to come with their might. They are going to come with all they have. They are not going to, you know, uh, 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 cut corners. They are going to go straight and deal with his people. And at the end of the day, this is the sad thing about the whole thing that the Babylonians are doing. 
And that's why here yeah, we judge the Babylonians at the end of the day. He said they are going to impute whatever they have achieved by cutting away and punishing Judah. They're going to, you know, give glory and honor to who? To Elua. Elua. Elua, to their God. Or to their El. Or to their Elohim. They are God. Today, in today's language, God. That is Yahweh knew. And that's why Habakkuk was saying to Yahweh, How are you going to use Babylonia? Oh, you don't remember they are worshipping gods? The Elo Eloas or Elohim or the, 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 the El. They're not worshipping you. And we say, Don't worry. You see, when Yahweh wants to deal with a rebellious person, he uses the most wicked fellow. That wicked fellow, you know, wicked fellow are those who don't, don't obey Yahweh, they don't know Yahweh. So Yahweh uses them as the rod against his people who rebel or who cancel his law. Let's move quickly. Now, Yahweh seems to have answered his first question. He's not contented. <laughs> he wants to ask Yahweh another question. And this question will be bordered on, on the fact that Yahweh has chosen. It, it appears that Yahweh has chosen the wrong people mm -hmm. to deal with his people. Let's hear his question. Are thou not from everlasting, O Yahweh, our Father? My holy one, we shall not die. Oh, Yahweh, we shall not. Are we going to die? This thing you want to do, would you consume us? <laughs> because Habakkuk have heard about Babylon. And the, by what Yahweh explained, these people are not going to leave any sand. They are going to even carry the sand of the people away. Everything that has to do with Judah, they are going to empty Judah. That means everybody must go. Get ready. All of you must go. And um, Habakkuk is worried, very, very worried. What is going to be our portion? It's like when they say, let us reset the world. Mm -hmm. Let us bring everything, vaccine, everything. Uh, ours is, are we going to be vaccinated? Is disease even that is flowing everywhere going to hit on our head? Are we going to suffer it? What is going to be our portion? Every man who is going to be worried. Yes. It's not only Habakkuk. Everybody is going to ask questions. And that's why going to Yahweh in prayer is important. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, come to me in prayer in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. When he makes this prediction, when he you know, tells you that this is what is going to happen as a result of breaking his covenant, what do you do? You repent. You go to him. He will surely save you. That is how he works. That is how he operates. If you go with him sincerely, with open hand, with open heart, with joy, knowing that he is in charge, he is the one working that, that evil that is happening. He is the one working it. He is the one supervising it. If you say it's a lie, read the book of Joel, chapter 2. In fact, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Read, it's just like the book of Habakkuk. Yahweh is the one, Yahweh supervises evil against his people. Evil will swallow them, but the just shall live by faith. Those that hold and depend on him, they run to him, they will live. That's what he's saying. Let's continue. Oh, Yahweh, thou hast ordained them for judgment. Who? Babylon, Babylonians. Oh, oh, mighty rock, thou hast established them for correction. Yahweh uses Babylonians. Babylonians for Yahweh is, are those that Yahweh is using for correction. Correction and judgment. Correction and judgment. They are Babylonians. 
always using them to do his work. Anytime you hear about Babylon, anytime you hear about Assyrians, anytime about, you hear about Egyptians, those are three nations or three people. Even in this our world today, they are still in existence. Yahweh is using them to fight his people, to deal with his people, to teach them lessons, to correct them. At times, that correction is in a violent way, in a destructive way. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore, lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoured the man that is more righteous than he? Yeah? Yahweh's eyes be, does not behold iniquity. Yahweh's eyes does not tolerate sin, evil. It doesn't tolerate wickedness in any level or at any time, or treacherousness, or treachery. No. He doesn't withhold. He deals with wickedness quietly. Do you know what Habakkuk is saying to Yahweh? Yahweh, those wicked people, why not get them, single them out, kill them in the land? Let us continue to live in the land. Let's continue. Don't move us away. It's moving us away the best thing. Because they have messed up the land well. But do you know why Yahweh had to move them? Because the land also is polluted. So by the time they move away, he will, he will clean the, the land. The, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, when you hear the land is polluted, the Sabbath is what brings about the pollution and the shedding of blood. When the blood of innocents are poured on the ground, that pollutes the land. When Sabbath is defiled, when the Sabbath is not kept, the land also will not have rest. So what would yeah we do? What he usually do is to flush the people away, chase them away. That's why the the ten tribes, Israel, were flushed away. That's why he sent them into into exile earlier before Judah. Verse fourteen. And makest men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. They take up all of them with the ankle, angle. They catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. Now here, Habakkuk was like seeing his people as fishes in the water that these people will come and just throw their nets and all of them will enter into the net and they drag them into their land. Mm -hmm. So here we do you want to do your people that way. In a way, Habakkuk wasn't comfortable. The measure that we want to take, that is too drastic. The judgment is too severe. Verse 16, therefore, they sacrifice unto their net. So at the end of the day, after this, Babylonians would have taken his people away from the land. <laughs> the net they use and carry, that, that is their idols and God, because they are coming with their idols and God to do all those things they want to do. They will carry their stone and wood and all those things. They're thinking that that is where their power is getting Israel out. So they will turn to those. That's what is calling nets now. So they will turn to those, their nets or their idols, and bow to the stone and wood. Therefore, they sacrifice unto their net and then incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous. They will feel. Oh, Babylonians will feel that this is their net, this is their idols, is what has gotten them Israelites in their hands, or Judah into their hands, that's given them victory and made them to, you know, uh, rejoice. Yeah, well, would you tolerate this? Because it's time to put words in Yahweh's mouth this time. Shall they therefore empty their nets? and do not spare continually to slay the nations? Well, let us hear what Yahweh will answer him. Verse, chapter 2. Yahweh's response to Habakkuk. I will stand 
upon my watch, yeah, uh, Habakkuk is still talking here, said, I will stand upon his watch. I have asked Yahweh. I have prayed to Yahweh. Let me stand. Let me wait and see what is going to happen, what Yahweh is going to, how Yahweh is going to answer me. And set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he, Yahweh, will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And because you know that Yahweh may, may reprove him. Yahweh may say, my friend, what type of query is this? You just want to get an answer from Yahweh. Verse 2. And Yahweh answered me. So Yahweh began to respond. And said, write the vision. So what Yahweh now is giving to him is what called vision. Yahweh is, is not just responding to him. Yahweh is giving him vision. An event that will occur. What Yahweh want to do. Yahweh now want to tell him what he intends to do how these Babylonians are going to come and deal with the situation, handle the, the, the rebellious Judah and the land that is polluted. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Now, the reason for writing it, the vision, the revelation, the message which Yahweh is giving to him is because it will surely come to pass. It will surely come to pass. Yahweh is saying, I'm not, I'm not messing anything. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, play it low. I'm not want to tamper here, tampering justice with mercy. There will be no mercy. Mm. At this time, the verdict is exactly as you will hear it. So write it down. Pass it to any man so that when they read it, they will run with it. What is wrong with it? They will hear. They will not harden their heart. They will do. If they don't do, they will die. But as for everybody, all of them will go. But it will be stage by stage. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Yahweh has his own time. Like the globalists are trying that the beast will come at at all costs. That is why you see all this COVID-19, Corona this, Corona that. They want to fight war now and so on and so forth. If they don't want to get that, they may use climate change and all that. They are trying everything they can. But Yahweh has the appointed time. Hallelujah. And this is why he said we should pray. Because the time is in his hand. It's not in any man's hand. Mm -hmm. So when we pray, Yahweh can delay it. He may even say, oh, until this generation that have you know, prayed, pass on and have their rest then maybe their children will face it. Then we may do it that way. Many occasions we saw something like that happen in the Bible. When David sinned, Yahweh didn't sweep away David. He said, okay, to be doing your... Uh, even Solomon. So Solomon, you sinned against me with all these concubines, with all these idols of nations. You forgot me. Don't worry, I will pass it to your next, your children. Your children are going to encounter your, the, the, the penalty. They are going to pay the price. And that was, that, that was what happened. Rehoboam carried it. In, in Rehoboam's rulership or uh, uh, this thing, Israel was divided into two. And the, the enmity never stopped up to today. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak. It will surely come and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. That way says, you think it's, it's going to delay? <laughs> Don't worry. When it will come, it will come suddenly. Mm. You will be wondering, this thing that we think is not going to come at all. How come suddenly? 
Oh, you may want to begin to pray that time. It will not work. Prayer will not work. That last minute, that when it, the trouble begins, no prayer will work at that time. The, the heart of Yahweh, the mercy of Yahweh, everything about Yahweh showing you his mercy will be you know, cut off. You, 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 you'll be on your own. Everybody will be on his own. The just then will be saved based on their faith with Yahshua or Yahweh. Verse 4, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his feet. That is how they are going to be saved, the just. As far as Judah is concerned, they are not upright again. They have walked away from Yahweh. But amongst them, anyone that commits himself to Yahweh shall save his soul. Yeah, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Do you hear about anybody that transgressed with, with wine today? <laughs> Bojo. Bojo had too much wine. And they were the, the country is saying he has transgressed. Uh, have you not been hearing about that? Yeah, also because he transgressed by wine. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as the grave, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and he pests unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a, taun a taunting? Proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. Mm. How long they were increasing things that were not their own? Mm -mm. Covetousness, stealing, all manner of wickedness was going on. Yahweh saw them all. How long unto him that led himself with tickle? Shall they not rise up suddenly and shall bite thee? and a whip that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them. You that have made yourself like the Babylonians, they are going to rise up against you and carry you, and all that you have. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covet an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consorted shame to the house by cutting off many people, and has sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. Behold, it is, is it not of Yahweh of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity, for very vanity. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. That is what Yahweh wants his nation, his people to, you know, that is how he wants it to be. Israel in particular. He wants Israel to be filled with knowledge of Yahweh, with glory of Yahweh, with righteousness of Yahweh in the land. But they, they don't want to, <laughs> that to happen. They want to live their own way, the way of Gentile, the way of Babylonians, the way of Assyrians, the way of the, the, the hidden world. Therefore, they are going to pay the price because nobody can change the program of Yahweh. No matter how long it will take, it will surely come to pass. They will pay the, 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 the price. Yahweh will sweep them away and cleanse the land. The same thing is happening in these later days. That's why their judgment is coming. Yahweh is going to sweep the entire earth, particularly Israel, wherever they are, they are going to answer what they have been doing with Yahweh's law, how they have been, you know, destroying the, the law of Yahweh, the way of Yahweh. 
And at the end of the day, those who have faith in him, he will take them back to the land. He's been preparing that land for them. And when they get there, they are not going to go back with sin because that land will no longer tolerate sin. That will keep them in holiness. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle. Sorry, am I reading? Um, what verse is that? Verse 15. Okay. That putteth thy bottle to him, and maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame, for glory drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of Yahweh's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spin shall be on thy glory. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts, beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land of the city, and of that of that dwell therein. What profited the graven image that the maker thereof has graven it, the molten image, and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that says to, to the wood, awake to the dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is led over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. What did they do? All the whole commandments, all the whole you know, law, the covenant of Yahweh, they had all broken them. Yahweh was reading them out for them. And uh, I believe after hearing this, Habakkuk had no choice. Because he knows that the penalty of breaking the covenant is death. Anybody, Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 20, uh, 26, anybody that will not keep to the law, to the covenant, the causes written therein shall fall or follow the person. That was, it's exactly what Yahweh is recalling here to, to them. So, when he when Habakkuk could hear this, he entered into prayers. He has had enough. You know, he, he thought he knew what was going on in the land, but Yahweh knew deeper how they were killing, how they were shedding blood, how they were molding, you know, dust, you know, put dust, put it in the image of man, bow to them, you know, all manner of things that bring the covenant, the relationship between them and Yahweh was completely bro broken. The relationship between them and themselves, you know, uh, uh, the righteousness, I mean, uh, the, the relationship that exists between man and man or woman and woman, all of them were broken. And Yahweh says, that cannot continue. It's time to judge them. Um, chapter 3, let's quickly finish it and uh, we close. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shigionot. Oh Yahweh, I have heard thy speech. I have heard what you said. I have concord. I have acknowledged I am illiterate. I didn't even know what was going on. Ignorance covered me. I know. I now understand. He will now turn on him that he didn't know much. Oh Yahweh, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Oh Yahweh, revive thy work in the midst of thy years. In the midst of years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. In this, you want to carry out. Remember mercy. Eloah came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went this pestilence, and the burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. 
the perpetual hills did bow, did bow, his ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was Yahweh displeased against the rivers? Was thy anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou didst ride upon thy horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy bow was made quite naked, according to the oath of the tribes, even thy word. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his deep, his voice, and lifted up his hands on the high. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thy arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear, thou didst march through the land in indignation, thou didst stretch the hidden in anger, thou went forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thy anointed, thou wounded the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the unto the neck, thou didst. and the head of his villages, they came out as a wild wind to scatter, to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Thou didst walk through the sea with thy horses, through the heap of great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice returning, returned entered into my bones, and I uh, trembled in, in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up into the people, he will invade them with his troops, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall, shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the food, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in Yahweh. I will joy in the in Yahweh of my salvation. Yahweh, my, uh, my, my sovereign, is my strength, and he shall make my feet like his feet, and he will make me to walk upon the high places to the chief singer on my, on my stringed instruments. Here, he, he, he was praying, he was singing visions, he was revealing things he never knew before. Yahweh was unfolding to him how he is going to go about, you know, dealing with his people. He will deal with them. In fact, what Habakkuk was saying here is that at the end of the day, none of you, Judah, Ju the tribe of Judah, None of you who had offended Yahweh will go scot free. Many of you will be slaughtered, their blood will be littered everywhere by this power that is coming, and the re remaining or the balance of you will be sent to exile and you will be destroyed. Then he said, No matter what will be going on, no matter the affliction, no matter the trouble, and this is where we come in, uh, the, the whole thing touches us today. Trouble is coming, evil is, is everywhere. Yahweh is going to judge this time. Yahweh is going to judge men and women. Yahweh is going to come with anger, with wrath. Yahweh is going to come with such a vexation that human beings have never witnessed since they are born in this earth. Then, said, as a righteous person, as embracer of Yahweh, as one that holds to Yahweh, have faith with Yahweh, I will not let go. My portion is going to be Yahweh. My life is going to be submitted to Yahweh. No matter what is going on, Yahweh is going to cover me. I'm going to be protected. That is the prayer anybody should be praying now and be telling, you know, comforting himself, so to speak, in Yahweh. Using the word of Yahweh to help because the sorrow is so great that even the faithful, those who are strong, those who have the might, those who have the power to overcome, 
if they are not rooted in Yahweh, in faith, they will crumble, they will mm. fall, they will be broken. Because Assyrians, in this latter day, it's not going to be, oh, Assyrians here or Babylonian there dealing with one side of the world or one side of, no, it's be a combination. Remember the, 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 the image that Daniel interpreted to, to Nebuchadnezzar. It is Babylon, Mes and Persia, Greeks, Roman Empire. All of them are put together and it is said to be um, the power of the little horn, which has all these empire powers resting in him. So it's going to be so strong, uh, the power of iron. And that power is going to devastate, is going to pursue Israel wherever they are in these latter days. So the book of Habakkuk did not just predict what happened to, to the tribe of Judah only at that time, but it's an extension of what will happen in these latter days. All Israelites, all Ju tribe of Judah, wherever they are, situated in the four corners of the world, they are going to be fished out. The Bible said they are going to be found. Yahweh know, he said Yahweh knows them where they are, who they are, even by their names. Yahweh is going to bring them out, and those that have violated his law is going to crush them. And the balance of Israel, as he pushed the tribe of uh, Israel or the tribe of Judah to Babylon, to Assyria, and some of those areas, in the same way. The remainder, the balance, he's going to bring them out and he's going to take them back to the land. Those are the ones that he's going to show us. Those are the ones he's going to protect. And those are the ones that he's going to give the land. Are you ready to be part of those that he's going to give the land? Our people are saying, no, at the end of the day, whatever that's good. The sample is has been given to us a little, a glimpse of what is coming. It's not even the D-Day. It's not even the day of wrath of Yahweh or the, 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 the great tribulation, so to speak. No. What happened in the, the days of Judah is going to be a child's play. It's going to be a child's play to what, compared to what is coming in these later days. And when you call people, even to come for this, our meeting, this uh, Torah class, it's like they are taking away their empire, you are taking away their monies, you are taking away their fame, you are taking away their wealth. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what transpired in the past, if you don't understand what happened in the ancient of the uh, ancient time, how will you know how you are going to carry yourself? How you are, how you are going to comport yourself in the world that is already polluted, stinking? How are you going to separate yourself from them? How are you going to now begin to march, moving towards your creator, that to the point that you embrace him as um, Habakkuk, who is called an embracer, embracing, trusted Yahweh, had confidence in Yahweh, you know, had that powerful love that even protected him, protected the, the, the saints, the faithful ones. So we are being, we are called here to watch out because that vision is still today. It's written everywhere in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The revelation of Yahweh, the vision of Yahweh, the message of Yahweh, they are all there. Book of Revelation in particular. Yahshua, after ascending into heaven, he took time to put everything in very clean, clear perspective of how it is going to work out in this latter days, how the vision is going to be carried out. The, the real vision, the true vision, the, the vision that has fire, sulfur, and brimstone is coming upon the wicked. The vision of Yahweh's judgment is coming. How prepared are you? How prepared are you in the sense that you hear this, you make use of it, you live by the word of Yahweh, you make sure you are in the path of righteousness not in the part of wickedness, not in the part of rebellion, not in the part of breaking his covenant. The, the, the real cause of the whole thing, the, the whole mess is breaking the covenant. Breaking the covenant is the law of Yahweh, the Torah, the Ten Commandments. 
Are you practicing them? Are you doing them? It is all about doing, 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 and having faith in Yahshua Messiah, who is the way, the truth, and the life. You don't let go. You hold to him to four hours. You eat his word, drink his word. He said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. How much of his word are you eating? How much of his word are you drinking? How much of his word are you even practicing, preaching to others as well? All these are what he called us to do. And as we abide, he will save us. Amen. That is what he said, that the just shall live by his faith. You must live by the faith you have in him. As you are going to be saved. Or else the sweeping is going to be terrible. And no wicked person will be saved. A wicked person is one that breaks his law. A wicked person is one that does not obey him. A wicked person is one that query his word. Do you query his word? Query it in the negative, query it in the sense that you don't want to do. You are querying just because you think Yahweh is against Yahweh. That is a fight. You are fighting against your creator. How will you survive it? How will you fight your creator and you think you will win? Nobody has ever withstood him and win the battle. All we need to do is to repent. Have our focus, have our faith in Yahshua Messiah because the kingdom is there for the willing hearts, for the obedient, because he's coming to restore them, he's coming to take them back to that kingdom. May he hear us, may he answer us, may he strengthen us, may he empower us, and may we be willing to give all to him. There is nothing you have, there is nothing you return or you keep by your side, Give all, your energy, your time, your everything, give it to him. And he will guide you. Look at Habakkuk. He was struggling all along, all along. But when Yahweh opened his eyes and his mind, and he, he completely now submitted and said, let your way be done. But save those who have faith in you. May it be so for you. May it be so for me. May we be saved. And may we alert others to run to him, even in this early time before the day they begins to stroke. Father, we thank you this evening. Thank you for your word. Thank you. thank you for helping us to look at the book of Habakkuk. Thank you for teaching us what is detailed there. Father, we pray for this preamble we had done within ourselves. Grant us grace individually to go back to it and study it and have this complete picture of all that you have presented to Habakkuk and you are presenting to us in these later days. Father, we pray that when the trouble will ensue all over the world, when the vision will be carried out, when the judgment will be carried out in the lives of every man, Father, we pray you save your people. We pray you help us to escape. We pray you cover us. We pray that the trouble of the wicked will not be put upon the head of the righteous, and the righteous will not be caught up in the crossfire. You will save your people. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Blessed be your holy name. Keep us safe. Through the night, be our protection. Be our keeper. Be our shield. Once again, we lift the children of uh, Brother Jonathan, unto your hand. May they wake up tomorrow and wake, wake up in with healing. Amen. Father, may they wake up and wake up with, with testimonies. Amen. May they wake up and indeed declare that only you and you alone truly is their healer. Amen. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Amen. In Yeshua's name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Do you have any query, observation, 